and welcome to Labyrinth Games and Puzzles in Washington, D.C. This video is a collaboration between Labyrinth and Ian herzog Pohl, one of Labyrinth's teenage customers who wanted a little bit more practice with his videography skills. In this series of videos, we're going to teach you how to play some of our very favorite family and kid games. We're also going to be exploring some of the educational benefits that these games provide. Today, we'll be playing IOTA, one of my very favorite games. It's the great big game in the Teeny Weeny 10. IOTA is a pattern recognition, logic, and strategy game created by Gene Mackles and published by Game Right Games. IOTA is for two to four players, and the company recommends it for ages eight and up, although I've seen children a little younger be able to play it. It's also one of the favorites of our seniors gaming group, making it a game that all ages can enjoy. This game is intellectually and mathematically challenging. It won the Mensa Select Award in 2012. We decided to teach you how to play it because the rules can be a little bit tricky when first getting started. So IOTA is a game in which you're going to make lines with one, two, three, or four cards. These lines are going to be made up of cards um, that have unique characteristics to them. They have numbers, colors, and shapes. The rules for a line is that each of these four characteristics must always be the same or different on a card. And these give you some examples of possible combinations of cards. This first line is what's called a lot. And a lot is when you get all four cards that fit into a line. This lot is where all of the characteristics are different. You have a red four circle, a three yellow triangle, a green two plus sign, and a one square that's blue. This is a feasible legal lot because every single characteristic, number, shape, and color are all different in this row. This is also a viable lot. In this line, these are all the number two. They are all red, but they are all different shapes. So again, you will have all the same or all different, all the same numbers, all the same colors, but all different shapes. And this, once again, is also a viable lot. These are all three, so once again, we have the same number, but we have the same shape with different colors. So this is also allowed. In this game, we are going to play crossword style um, such that we are scoring all of the numbers of the lines that we make. Um, and whoever has the highest score at the end of the game when all of the cards are used wins. So in IOTA, you're going to want a piece of paper and a pencil to be able to keep score. And you're going to want to give each player four cards. These cards are kept secret from the other player. The remaining cards are kept in a stack at the side of the table. One card is chosen to start your grid. Um, and then we're going to just start playing. The important things to know is that any two cards can go together and that will set the rules for whatever that line is going to be. At the end of the turn, when you play your first cards, you will draw back up to have always four cards in your hand. You will never have enough more than four cards. If for any reason in a turn you cannot play or wish not to play, you can always discard any number of cards back to the pile. You want to put it at the bottom of the pile and draw four more cards or however many cards you've replaced into your hand. That will effectively give up your turn though. You will be passing your turn to discard back into the pile and draw more cards. Uh, Robert, would you like to go first? I haven't um, looked at my cards yet. No, I have no idea. All right, I, 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 I don't have much here, so I'm just going to do You're going to do that. I'm okay, that. that's it. All right, so, so Robert has added to this line. Um, you can only add to one individual line in this game. Um, you can, however, make a line that creates other lines, which we'll show you in a few minutes. But for Robert, he's added a blue plus sign number four to this one round circle blue. This means that the rules for this line are now going to be different numbers, same color, different shapes. 
it sometimes helps me to learn this game to always say in my head what a certain line is so that I will know whether or not I can add to that line. Um, so Robert now scores how many points, Robert? Five points. Five points because it is a four plus one. I am going to play this four here, effectively adding to this line, but I'm actually working on this line. So I am going to add this one and this one. So I have still only played in one line. However, just like when you use two letter words in Scrabble, I am taking advantage of also creating to this line. So I am going to get lots more points than Robert. Um, I will get to score this row, which is eight points, a four and a four, and I get to score this point, which is nine points. So I have 17 points. Four plus four is eight. Four plus three plus two is nine. Um, nine plus eight is 17. This row will now be all fours, different colors and different shapes, and this row will have all of the characteristics different. It's different numbers, different shapes, and different colors. And I have 17 points. Um, so, so now I got really lucky because I was given a wild card. So mm. I'm going to put, play this here. Now, uh, what's interesting about this wild card is that, and this may be something to be deleted, but what's interesting about this wild card is that I know exactly what this has to be, which is a one blue circle. Oh, which so means I'm never going to be able to replace it. Exactly. Mm. So nobody's going to be able to replace it. Um, so that makes sure that I, only I get the, the points for this. So now, since it's a one blue circle, I can now go ahead and see how many of the cards that I have in my hand I can add there. So that's a legitimate one right there. Right, so and now, that will make that row all, all different. different. All different, exactly. So now, one blue circle, I can do three red cross as well because, uh, because that's still all different there. Um, now, since I played this row, but I added it to this one, so first of all, I get to score 10 points for that. You don't get 10 I, points because it's 4 plus 3 plus 2 is 9, but wild cards do not count for anything. Even though it represents a one blue, uh, uh, a one one blue, blue circle, circle, it does it? not count for a one blue circle. So you get no points for the wild card. Sorry, Robert. I'll still take um, it, though, it's because still a really good score. I get another seven points here. Right. And because I completed a line here of four, I get to double. You do. In IOTA, one of the important scoring aspects is that anytime you create a line of four cards or complete a lot, even if it's with a wild card, you get to double your entire score for that um, turn. So, you, Robert, you did great that turn. So we have 9 plus uh, 7 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32 points for Robert. So I'm just going to write that down on my score chart here, and then I'm in trouble because now Robert has 37 to my 17. I better get to work here. All right, so now Robert has done this fantastic play. I, I need to catch up. I don't think my cards are really great to help me out right now. But I am going to... Um, it's important to notice that anytime you put two cards together, that makes your line and that makes your rules. So I can play here because I'm adding to this horiz or this vertical line and this horizontal line. Um, and I have something else that will go with this rule. This rule will now be all twos, all yellow different shapes, and I don't have another two in my hand, but I do happen to have another yellow that is a, a different color. And because I could put it over here, but I wouldn't be able to get as much points, I can also put it here. And then I'm adding to this line because I added these two cards. But I'm also adding to these two lines. So I'm going to get this line and these two lines. So that will be 5 plus 4 is 9. And then I get another 4 here, which comes to 13. And another 6 here, which comes to 19. So that's not bad. So that is 16 points for me. And I'm going to write it down. And now I'm at 30, 
or 33 to Robert's 37. So you didn't catch up that much because your <laughs> first five points. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. I still have a ways to, to go. Fortunately, I have another wild card. Oh, no! So now, here's the, here's the question. Where can I add that? Now, um, obviously, I want to line it up here because that's three. I can get to four one way or the other. You could. Now, you the can't put it is, there, though. I can't put it there, though, because no. it has to be a one... Um, uh, 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 one triangle yellow is what that one, card one is. One triangle right yellow, person. exactly. Which and does not, work, does not work with that line. Nope. So I'm going to put it over here as a nice. one, one triangle, triangle yellow. yellow. And now um, I do have one more card that uh, that can go with that. Uh, so now I I have I, I stay with yellow, but it, now it's different. Uh, it's different shape, a different um, number. Uh, right. Is... So it's going to be similar to this row here. Right. Um, okay. So now you're scoring. So this will be five plus four is nine, and another four will be 13 and you get to double it because once again you got all four in a row um so 20, that is 26, 26. Uh oh 26 you got I, too lucky getting the two I know, wilds in I a mean, row you, i think i'm just gonna build off of here mm -hmm. um it's important to note that i was just struggling because i don't have anything that can add to any of these lines but when you get stuck like that always look for the place where you only have one card and you can always build off of one card because as i've said before any two cards can make a line um i think that's where a lot of people get stuck in this game is they're like oh i don't have any you know i don't have a three that's a red or a blue that's a circle or a square or i don't have a two yellow and people get stuck if you ever get stuck, find some place that's only one card and you can add anything to that line. So this here is, I get six and six, so I have 12 points right there. Actually, I, I can do a little bit better than that because okay. nice. I can add Ooh, nice. that right there. Okay. And so now I don't have the uh, round blue. The blue three? Uh, three that would we'll allow keep me to an eye go out on that one, eight, right? Exactly. <laughs> But I can, I, I mean, I'm actually not adding onto this line. I'm actually adding on to that line. So you're building I'm this building line. building this line. Um, it's a four-pointer. Um, it, it, it starts a, a line where that's all, all different. Yep, all different. All different. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm good to go. I get... Um, Nine. Nine points for that. I get seven points. That yeah, sixteen points. Not sixteen points. Not too bad. Perfect. Oh, but look what I do have, Robert. I have the card that needs to go in this line. Um, so I don't have much that I can use off of it. But when you have this, this is a little works a little bit like the rules to Rummy Cube. If you have the card that can replace a wild, you get to take that wild back and you can replace it with the correct card so the correct card in this line is the one yellow triangle and now i get this wild i am going to now use this wild in my turn um, you do not get scoring for laying down the triangle that replaces the wild but, but you can also... use this wild now and you're going to get scoring for that. It does not, uh, it, that is not your turn. The that is not your turn, is not that your is turn. replacing, but you have to use one of your cards to and, do it. And you, But you can only do it at your turn? Is you that can only it? do it on your turn. You right. can only replace a card and take the wild on your turn. At this time, we wanted to just take a quick break and explain a little bit of, more about wild cards. Wild cards can be played at any time, and you don't necessarily have to play them as the fourth card or the ending of a lot in the game. You could play them even when you have two or three cards in a line. The reason strategically that normally you'll place the wild card at the end of a line that already has three cards is by doing that you will then get to double the score effectively because you have played the fourth card in a line. However, if you decide for some reason to play a wild card when it's not a complete lot, 
in going forward, if someone wants to replace it, they also have more chances to replace it. And strategically, if you want to play defensively, you want to try and eliminate your opponent's options for replacing your wild and taking that card to be able to potentially score a larger score. But in this, in this situation, I could replace this if I had a four plus yellow, a four yellow um, circle, or a four blue circle, or a four blue plus. Um, that gives me four chances to replace that card as opposed to if I had a line of three already made, the only card that could now replace this wild would be a four blue plus sign because that's the only card that can go into that line. Um, so that's a little bit more about how wilds work. So I am going to, I think, work it down here into uh. this one. And then I'm going to do that, and so I'm going that to also, a, that is going a, to be a blue, blue three, three circle, circle. Mm -hmm. blue three circle, and I'm going to also put this one next to it here, okay. which will be all circles and all, well, all circles, but different colors and different numbers. But that means I get this line and this line and this line, and I get to double it because I made a lot. So this will be 9 plus 4 is 13 plus 8 is 21 times 2 is 42 points. <laughs> so I just want everybody to make sure uh -uh. they saw that. This is 9, and make sure I did it right. Right. This is 9 points. Mm -hmm. I also get, because I put these two cards on, this is the line that I'm working on, but this was already there. So I am adding to this line and this line, and I get this line. So this is 9 and then I score this row, which is um, 4, which is 13, plus 8 here, which is 21, right? 8 plus 3 is 21, and then times 2 is 42. So one of the things that I like the most about IOTA is that it is an incredibly cerebral game. You are constantly trying to remember what goes where and how to work the patterns. Um, surprisingly, Kids tend to do this better than the adults that I know. Um, I think it's because they're used to finding patterns in their schoolwork and things like that. Um, it definitely supports um, spatial reasoning and pattern recognition skills, all very, very important skills. Um, what I like about IOTA, too, is that it's very much focused on the characteristics of cards, the numbers, the colors, the shapes. Um, and you really have to think about how these things work together in patterns. Um, you got to play, Robert? I think so. You tell me if I got this right. So I am going to do fours, fours there okay. with different. And then in this direction, it's red uh, is the same, but the numbers and the shapes are different. Right. Not uh, So that's eight points, and that's six points, so that's 14 points, which is a perfectly acceptable. Okay, we're going to speed up a little bit, guys, so that you can um, start seeing how we're playing, and then we're going to get back into it and show you end of game and final scoring. So the end of the game in IOTA is triggered when the draw pile is completely empty and when one player plays their last cards. These are my last two cards, and I'm going to get five points for that, but now I have no more cards in my hand. That immediately triggers the end of the game. Um, and so Robert does not get to play his last card. Um, I think it's important to note a lot of times when people start playing games, they get very, very stressed out about the rules. Um, in a lot of times when we teach games, we make house rules. Um, in this game, there's a rule about if you play all the cards in your hand or if you get a lot for, you get to double the score, effectively doubling a double, which I think makes the game a little bit too luck-based and can really skew the points. So a lot of times at Labyrinth, when we're playing, we make the rule that you can only double a score once during a turn. 
Um, I think it's important too to remember, do what you need to to make a game fun. I generally really like to try and learn to play a game by its rules at the beginning of a game. But then a lot of times we'll work with kids or other people to say, how would we like this game better if we adapted a certain rule? Um, I think it's great playing open-handed at the beginning of this game so that everybody can see and talk about what is happening is a really great way to learn this game as well. So that was IOTA, and um, I think if you like this game, there's a couple other games that this game is based on. Um, a game called Set and a game called Quirkle, two of my other very, very favorite games. Set is similar in the rules, um, the all the same, all different rule, but it's a speed-based, everybody plays at one time game, which can make a lot of people very nervous because it's very fast. Um, Quirkle is a similar game that is, um, that is a little bit more simple because the rules and the lines are either all one color in different shapes or all different shapes in one color. Um, both of those games are fantastic games. Quirkle is a wonderful game to start with when your children are really young. They can play it as just a shape matching game um, and then start adapting scoring into later, but it's still fun enough to play with hardcore gamers because there's a lot of strategy in it. But um, IOTA is definitely one of my favorite games and I definitely think it's one of the most cerebral, thinky, fast games that we possibly have.